What up? Doing pretty good. Uh, I think I got a couple touchdowns over there in that corner of the end zone. But, I mean, I've also had some bad moments over there, too, you know, like when I broke my leg. <laughs> so, I mean, at the end of the day, I think there's good moments, there's bad moments, but um, you just try to figure out how to thrive with the opportunities that's given. I wouldn't say that that's my corner of the end zone. I think there's a lot of people who could say that's, that that's their corner of the end zone. But, you know, good things have happened so far over there, too. I just go back to backyard football. You know, like when we was kids, we go out there, play in the grass, and it's no rules. You know, they try to be able to coach it in a way to where it's not chaotic. But really, it's just about trying to be able to figure out how can you beat your man, how can you be able to get open, and then you try to make sure you're on the same page with the quarterback. Obviously, it doesn't work out every time because I haven't been able to scramble as much as I used to um, back in the day. But um, that game, I was able to really like connect with Gino just with where his eyes was going, like as he was progressing through his reads, finding the open zone holes, and just being able to understand it's my ball or it's nobody's ball, the way that Gino throws the ball. So he's going to throw it only to where we could catch it. And if we can't catch it, then we're going to at least have another down to play. But I mean, he was spot on every single time that we was trying to run and get open in the scramble drills. I mean, it's really not a lot of type of ways to coordinate it. But like I said, they kind of have a specific type of design of how it would like to go whenever we're out there running around and scrambling. So I think for us, it's also based off of what the play is and how many people are running routes and where are they going um, within the scheme of the offense. And um, some of them plays that we had, I was the only one on my side or, you know, things were cleared out. And so it was easier for me to find different ways to scramble. But there's other times where it's a lot more difficult because of the play design. You have to be able to also have an understanding of where a certain player is. And sometimes you play off of what you see they do. So if one person decides to make a move and try something, then it makes you want to do something different. Can't really go into detail because we're about to play another team and you can't be letting them know what you think and how you see stuff. So you're making a decision on the fly based on what you're seeing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's almost like you're driving on the highway and somebody cuts you off. Like, immediately you got to react. I mean, that's kind of how it is on the scramble drill. Like, you're, like this is a play we want to do. Sometimes that play doesn't work. And after that, another play goes on. And I think it just it's something that, because I was here for so long, it's something that we always taught, that we always learned. So it's something that you always have you know, in the back of your head any time a play breaks down. Gina said this was a good matchup because it's good to get battle tested at this point. <clears throat> what would you add to that? I mean, I agree. You know, I think that this is going to be a very, very grimy game. I think that um, the Ravens are um, really, really physical. Um, their secondary is really good. Their front seven is really good. I think it's just one of those times where you get a chance to really see, like, hey, man, where are we at as a team? Uh, we just went against another great team that's in their division, and it went all the way down to the wire where, you know, we won the game at the end. And so I think for us, like, like there's not going to be a lot of games where there might be blowouts. You know, there's going to be a lot more close games in the NFL with any team because everybody's good. And so we're playing caliber teams that have a chance to be a Super Bowl contender. And so we just got to go out there and we just got to be able to play but, you know, you can't focus so much on who you're about to play. You got to focus on everything that you're building each and every week and just understanding, like, what is it that we have to do to be able to attack what we see and just focus on that. Was there a moment when you went against uh, Devin Witherspoon in, in the offseason or training camp or whatever when you could tell he was going to become the kind of player that he's becoming? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could tell as soon as we got out there and played. Um, just coming from college and – seeing his mentality, like the mindset of just, he was really smart in understanding route schemes and concepts already in college. And that's not something that's always a given because everybody has the talent, but it takes time for people to understand like the mental part of the game. He understood the mental part of the game. You know, obviously he just had to fight through um, some of the nagging injuries that was kind of holding him out. But 
I mean, as soon as he got to hit the ground and running, like he did a great job. He's been doing a phenomenal job. We've moved him around in different spots. And I mean, that's something that's difficult. You know, you're looking at corners and they're like, man, I could play on the outside, but then you put him at nickel and it's a lot different. Well, he's thriving regardless of whatever we put him at. And he is really a person that wants to be a competitor. And so every time he's out there, it's like, you gotta be able to be aware of what he's doing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> how is, how, what, what's the trick to staying sharp at this point? Uh, I just think the trick to staying sharp is just, I think it's, it's all mental. Like the physical part is what keeps you playing. Because if you're, if you're not able to stay physically in shape and physically be able to get open, that's the easiest way to be able to, like, to get out this league. Because, I mean, you're looking at young guys now and, I mean, 4-4 four, four is slow. <laughs> like, you know, nowadays as we're getting closer and closer um, to where this league is going, so people want four threes. People are running more of high four twos, and so the game is getting a lot faster. The game is getting more physical. Like, people are becoming more quicker. So you got to be able to understand the game, and the IQ of the game, I think, is what allows a lot of older players to be able to play a lot longer because you know how to be able to utilize people's skills against themselves. And so for me, that's how I've always wanted to be. Like I played basketball and I would understand the game of basketball. I understand my matchups, who I want to go to at certain times, what plays you want to call, when to hold the ball, when not to hold the ball, when to get a foul so I can go to the free throw line. Like all these different things, it's like the game within the game. So yeah, there might be people that are better than me, but I'm smarter than you. Like that's how I mentally try to think about it. And so if I can use your strengths against yourself or if I can use your weaknesses against yourself, I'm going to be able to do that. I just pick and choose when do I want to do it and how do I want to do it. So to answer your question, I think that's what helps us as older guys stay in it, especially if we don't have a chance to be able to practice because it's really the IQ of the game that really makes playing football a lot more easier. So I try to do that when I play golf. I try to do that when Sometimes I play the video game as I always try to sharpen my mind and figure out how could I have been better. So, I mean, I don't know if you play golf. Golf is a hard sport to play. But I hit the driver, boom, great shot. Hit my second, my second shot, great shot. But then my chip, it might take me two chips, you know, because it's like, dang, what did I do on the third one? I tried to baby it. Then, you know, then I get on and I go from having a chance to get a par to now I got a double bogey. And so mentally, I don't care what I get, but I just tell myself like, hey, hitting a great drive shot is like winning at the line of scrimmage. Hitting a great second shot is like being able to win at the top of your break. But not having that good chip shot, that's almost like not finishing the play. Like, oh, you dropped the ball. You know what I mean? So it's stuff like that where I try to, I try to take my mind as far as I can mentally to sharpen it. So that way when it's time for football, like I'm able to be at a better place. Oh, say it again. <laughs> How long could I play if I didn't practice? Did you have the football IQ that you could play without practicing? Oh, uh, you know, I had to do it a good amount of times in my life, you know, where there was playing AAU basketball and I didn't practice, whether it was me being hurt and I had to still go out there and play. Um, in college, like there was times I was dealing with stuff and I couldn't play. And at that point, you just got to be able to tell yourself, like, I got to focus on the things that make me me. Like sometimes when you go out here and practice, it's like you're always working to get better and you're able to like do certain things and try certain things. But when you don't have a chance to be able to practice, then you're like, I got to be able to go to all of my go to's. I got to be able to do the stuff that I know that I could be great at and I don't have to practice that. And so I think that's kind of the only thing that I could say. But mentally, I, even though I'm not practicing, I'm still practicing like in my head. Like I'm still working on all the things that I need to do that I think that I need to learn before we get ready to play. So it's not just like I'm sitting on my butt and I ain't doing nothing the whole entire time. It's like, no, nah, I'm doing something, but it's just not at a point where I can get put as full participant, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case is. When you, uh, when you entered the league, did you set a goal at all for how long you wanted to play? <laughs> I already passed it. 
it wasn't a goal, but I, was, I wanted to play for eight years. Then eight years ended, and I was like, dang, so I could still play. Was, I was like, dang, but I'm 30. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to just keep playing. I'm going to play as long as, you know, God lets me play. Uh, I mean, I know they talk about, oh, this is a young man's game, blah, blah, blah. Like, people will try to get you out of there, whatever the case is. But I just feel like, man, I'm going to just go out there, keep trying to be me, keep trying to play at a high level, try to be there for my teammates, you know, continue to create those relationships. Because at one point, you know, the game is going to end for me, and, the, and it's just a matter of when is it going to end. But I don't want it to end too short to where I'm like, man, I could have kept playing. You know, because I can't go back and play again. So I might as well just try to see how far I can take it, how far I want to keep on playing, and then just let whatever happens, happens. Why did you say eight years? I don't know. It just sounded like a good number. <laughs> it's like when my financial lady asked me, when do you want to retire? I said 30. <laughs> so it was like, all right, you're 30. And I was like, ah, I'm going to just keep on playing. Can you imagine going 20 years in the 41? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> I will not be playing when I'm 40 years old. I could tell you that much. How impressive is Willie Smith? It is very impressive. I can't imagine him having to, like, really be physical with another person day in and day out. Because every single play, like, they're literally banging heads. Like, for me, I mean, I could pick and choose when to be physical. It depends on who's guarding me, you know, with when it comes to me being able to be physical. But, yeah, I mean, playing to 40, I mean, I would probably literally have to not <laughs> practice at all and just go play if I'm going to be 40 years old and playing. That's really great for him. <laughs> Who's pep talk? Oh, I don't know. I was in my own head. I'm like, bro, we down three. <laughs> we got to figure this out. And then we had just, I think it was 12 men on the field. We were like, yeah, some of us were spaced out just because of the previous play that was called. So, yeah, I didn't hear it. But what did he say? Uh, well, I wasn't in on that one, probably because I, I didn't practice all week. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think we're really at a great place. It's just like when you look at our record and you look at the things that we've done, it's like we haven't even gotten to the place where we can actually be. Like the first two drives, it was outstanding. Then we became stagnant. And it's like we see glimpses of how great we can be. We see glimpses of how explosive we can be. But then we also see how we shoot ourselves in the foot. And so I think for us, we just got to become more consistent. We're doing a great job on third downs now. I think Pete said we were all like in the top 10. Don't quote me, I'll just say middle of the pack. And you look at stuff like that and it's like, man, like we're really starting to build and we're starting to overcome some of the things that stopped us from being great, you know, from our previous times. And so we just gotta be able to keep playing and not have this mindset of like, hey man, we arrived. Because regardless if you get to this place of, all right, the record shows, you know, we're this. Well, every team is going to be gunning for you. So regardless if you're an underdog, you're going to have that mentality like we're going to show you if we're the underdog. And if you're going to be the top dog, you got to be able to understand and show people why you're the top dog. How unique is Shane with like, uh, some of the formation stuff you guys do with tight ends together in the backfield? Is he different from a lot of other coordinators in that regard? Oh, yeah, I think Shane is very unique. You know, I think he's different. But when you look at the coaching tree that he's been a part of, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, you know, how how like creative he can be in the variety that he has within his offense of how he calls things, some of the things that we're doing before the plays, when we're running around. I think it's very unique. Um, I think it's very different. And I think it can always keep defenses kind of like from trying to figure out what's going on because what makes the game very, very easier for a lot of us is that when you have a group of people around you that can be able to make plays, then it's, it's just, it doesn't matter. A defense can't say, hey, we're going in to stop DK. Like, they can't say, hey, we're going to try to make sure Tyler don't do this. Because you got tight ends, you got other receivers, you got running backs, you got everybody who can make a crazy play if they get the ball in their hands. And so it just makes everything that much easier because 
teams can't just try to say, if we take this person out, it's an easy game. For us, anybody can get the ball at any given moment. And I think that's why, you know, Shane's offense is really, really helping us out a lot because teams can't stop just one person and say, we're going we're gonna to win. It's like, man, you see Bobo making plays. You see Jax making plays. You see Kobe. Man, Kobe does a phenomenal job with just burst of block that we talk about, making these crazy blocks to be able to make it from an eight-yard catch to a 25, 30-yard catch. You see Noah. You see Dis. You see Zach. You see Ken. You see DJ. I mean, like I said, man, I, I can, I'm not about to name everybody on the, on the team, but, I mean, you get my point. Like, literally, the people that I'm naming, you know, we got Eskridge back, like, you give them a chance to get the ball in their hands, and you'll be surprised what they can do. <laughs> Dariq's coming back. <laughs> All right. Yep. See you.